Why am I so obsessed with Dollar Tree DIYs? If you're with me, stick around until the end where I show you my favorite of the four spring-themed DIYs created predominantly from Dollar Tree items, all of which can be used inside or outside any covered area. We're starting strong with this multi-purpose stand from the Dollar Tree. I picked up one with a wood top and I also picked up one of these wire plant hangers. I removed the five screws holding the top to the legs and went outside with a can of royal blue spray paint and got really good coverage with two coats. While that's drying, I head back into the craft room and off camera, I had painted this wood round with a white chalk paint. And into it, I am blending the colors elephant and chestnut. I picked this rice paper up off of Etsy. And the seller is actually sold out of them. But if you look on Amazon for bicycle rice paper, you'll see it pop up. This bicycle cannot be the only image on the wood round. So I'm picking a few pieces off of another sheet of rice paper while our mascot Maisie oversees the process. When I started this project, I really did not know what I was going to do to complete the entire scene because if I had, I would have painted or stenciled on this brick wall before adding the rice paper to the design. <laughs> Leave it to me to do things ass backwards and end up working harder than I had to, but I assure you that the end result of this design is every bit worth the backwards effort. <laughs> I used antiquing wax to tone down the color of the bricks and stenciled on three sparrows before moving to the next step. This silicone mold came from Amazon and I want to say it was nine or $11. I love it because it's great for adding a border to any of your projects. I'm gonna use wood glue to attach this faux strand of beads to the outside edge of the wood round. And to make sure that nothing slips or slides, I use some painter's tape to keep everything intact. And I do set this aside to dry for about 24 hours. The next day I come back in with Admiral Blue, which closely matches the legs of the table and cover those beads up. And then I give it just a light brush over with white chalk paint to make them pop. And once I'm done with all of the painting, I take this outside and give it a clear coat to protect the surface. Here, I'm just cleaning up the underside of that wood round. By now, you're probably pretty curious about the hanging wire basket, so we'll move on to that step next. Here, I'm just removing seven links from each of the three strands. Going back to the underside of the wood round, I'm measuring in from the edge about a half inch. And this is where I will attach the eye hooks that we're going to use to hold the basket in place later. But before I do that, I'm gonna remove each of these three chains and just swap one end with the other. So I'm literally disconnecting it, flipping it over and connecting it with the opposite side. I want to pause for just a second and say thank you for still watching. I appreciate it so much when you like and comment on the video, when you share it with friends. And I also want to say thank you to everyone who has sent a super thanks my way. They were the first that I've received and they truly warmed when my heart. When screwing in the eye hooks, I'm making sure that each of them position to where they're facing out. If you don't do this, the basket may not hang straight. Once I have the legs screwed back on and the basket hanging from those eye hooks, I can figure out how I'm going to style this. My first idea is to place one of these wood rounds from the Dollar Tree that I had painted black into the bottom of the basket. And this will give me a landing place for decor. And I think it looks super cute with some of these faux grass and boxwood rounds. 
and a lit candle. Here it is with one of those round cocoa liners from the Dollar Tree, which I can put a plant in later, and I really do like either look. We have a really attractive side table with a dual purpose, and I cannot wait to set this out on my porch when the time is right. Let me know what you think about this Dollar Tree Spring DIY. This piece was new to me at my Dollar Tree. It's a rectangular fence piece that looks like it might be a gate to a fence because it has these wood hinges glued to it. I start here by removing those wood hinges and setting those aside. I'll later paint those black and reuse them. I spend just a few minutes trying to get this wood piece to be the tone that I want. I want it to be a darker background for what we're going to put on top and um, have the highlights and the lowlights of blacks and whites mixed in. Once that's dry, I glue the hinges back on and set this piece aside. I just started seeing these outdoor thermometers in my stores a few years ago and every year they seem to get a bit nicer than the year before. My house in the spring and late summer, we have swarms of bumblebees and carpenter bees. Yes, those nuisance carpenter bees that mean no harm, but scare you away from the queen. There was nothing I could do to exterminate them humanely, so I decided to embrace it and every year add some kind of bee decor to my front porch. This thermometer is perfect. I'm adding some paper flowers from my stash and a rubber bumblebee that came from the kids section at Michael's. I'm using hot glue in some areas for a quick adhesion just for video purposes, but also reinforcing it with E6000 or wood glue. Hot glue does not hold up outside during the dog days of summer. And I want this little cutie to last. As an added detail and one of the final steps in this quick project, I'm taking some of these gold sticky beads from Dollar Tree and I'm going to attach them to the hinges to give it hardware. I thought rubble and butterflies, also pollinators, would be perfect for this project just to add a little extra detail. I made a tiny knot with jute rope to cover the hole in the thermometer and use that same jute rope to replace the hanger in the wood fence piece. And this DIY is complete. Here is the final look. It's still too cold in Southern Pennsylvania to start decorating my porch for spring. So I've hung this up inside to show you what it looks like. We do so many detailed projects on this channel and I wanted to offer you an idea for something that's very quick and easy and will inspire you to start decorating for spring. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this fast to easy spring Dollar Tree DIY. I'm using one of these shadow boxes from the Dollar Tree. This is the largest of the three sizes and I'm going to cover the entire thing in peacock blue chalk paint. And when that dries, I will add some cracking medium all over the front and sides where I've painted and then I set that aside to dry for about an hour. Once that's dry I'm adding one coat of acrylic paint in the color lilac and as you can see it's actually crackling while I'm still painting so it doesn't take long for the crackling medium to work but I'm going to set this aside for about 15 minutes to dry. I have this beautiful piece of rice paper with dragonflies and flowers on it and I'm going to take just a few pieces from this sheet and adhere it to the box using a thin coat of Mod Podge on the back side of the paper as well as on the surface of the box. Once I have that down and smoothed out, I'll coat the top of the image with another light coat of Mod Podge. If you're enjoying this video, give it your stamp of approval by clicking that like button. This lets YouTube know that other crafters would enjoy it too, and it really helps the channel. And consider becoming a part of the Craft Crumbs family. Click that subscribe button 
so you never have to look for me and are among the first to know when I upload a new video. And the small amounts of rice paper that are hanging out over the edge are still wet with Mod Podge, so it's really easy for me to just pull them off without doing any sanding. Decoupaging with actual rice paper is probably the easiest process you could use for decoupaging at all. But as you know, you can use a napkin here or other paper image that you have, even scrapbook paper. Just think of the weight of the paper when you're determining how much Mod Podge to add. Once all of the Mod Podge I've just added is dry, I go back in and add on my embellishments. I'm going to use two different ribbons here from the Dollar Tree, starting off with a deep purple. I believe this is three quarter of an inch wide. And then I finish with the black and white check ribbon, which is more like a half inch on top of it. And you'll see how I just wrap that around the box and secure it at the top with hot glue. I have this beautiful pick of flowers from Timu. You can certainly use flowers from your own stash or from Dollar Tree. But I start to just pull this apart and place some leaves and greenery as well as the flower heads on top of the box to make it interesting and pretty. I'm going to glue on two of these black and white paper flowers. I believe I picked these up from Hobby Lobby. I just found them in my stash and wanted to add them in because they match the ribbon that we put on the sides. To finish the project, I'm going to paint the inside of the shadow box or what is now the back side of our shadow box with some cashew chalk paint. And I simply chose this color because it's at the bottom of the bottle and I wanted to use it up. Adding another display option, I'm going to take just a small piece of this same ribbon in the black and white check and glue it to the back to use as a hanger. Here is the final look at the project. I think this would be a perfect addition to a sunroom or a covered porch. I'm always inspired by other YouTubers who have a bookcase on their porch. This would be the perfect element of surprise, something to bring color to the space wherever you choose to place it. Let me know in the comments what you think about this Dollar Tree DIY for spring. The transformation of this mason jar from the Dollar Tree is going to blow your mind. I'm starting with a plain white sheet of paper. This is not computer paper and it's not cardstock. It's just a medium weight in between. And then I have an image that I pulled from a book of papers from Timu. You can use whatever image you have on hand. Just make sure you love it. I'm using my circle cutter to cut a three and a half inch circle from the white sheet of paper as well as the craft paper. Now I'm going to take this first image here, the one with the birds on it, and I'm going to Mod Podge over the front, just the front, and you'll see why here in just a second. I'm giving it a healthy, healthy coat of Mod Podge and smoothing it out. I'm going to place this inside the jar and to do that and make sure that it's centered, I'm folding it in half and then sliding it on in, making sure that it's nice and straight. And I use my silicone spatula and my fingers to smooth it out and make sure that it is completely adhered to the inside of the glass jar.
This next step may seem a little strange, but stick around and you'll see exactly why I'm doing this in just a few minutes. I'm going to add Mod Podge to one side of that white cutout of our circle in the same size. And I'm going to lay it down on top of the jar to cover that piece of paper we put on the inside. In this step, I'm making sure that the paper is completely adhered to the jar, especially around the edges. Once I'm happy with that, I'm wiping off the glue that is sticking to the glass. We want to completely remove that glue. There shouldn't be any of it left on the glass. Using a foam pouncer, I'm going to cover this jar with chalk paint in the color Sage. I'm first using a very small pouncer to get the edges around that piece of paper that we adhered to the jar, and then I switch to a larger pouncer to complete the job. I used my heat gun and had this first coat dried in just a minute or two, and I'm applying the second coat with a paintbrush. This will smooth out some of those pounce marks that we created in step one. But if you like the texture you get from pouncing the paint on, then go ahead and pounce on the second coat as well. Once that paint is completely dry, I'm going to clean off the rim of our jar just to make sure that I don't have any remnants of paint up there where it's not supposed to be. And use clear wax by Waverly to seal the paint on the jar. Holding the jar from the inside, I slowly and carefully remove the white circle that I glued to the outside of the jar. And this reveals the image that we put on the inside. Because the Mod Podge will naturally stick to the paper surface more than the glass, I didn't have a lot of cleanup here. I once again used a baby wipe to clear off any remnants of Mod Podge on the glass. And using a stylus I am removing little remnants of the blue paint that seeped underneath the circle. And literally, the only thing that could be better than one of these jars is two of them. I had done the same technique using yellow chalk paint, a larger jar, and a different shape for my image, and made this the perfect set. Off camera, I painted in the same colors the two-piece lids that came with the jars, and now I'm just taking hummingbird transfers and putting them on the inner piece of the lid here. And I'm gonna place them on the jar, interchanging the outer screw-on part so that the yellow goes on the blue jar and vice versa. I think these turned out so beautiful. They're so unique and I cannot wait to display these for spring. You could 100% leave that middle piece out and put florals in these jars and set outside on the porch. Or you can leave them in for a completely closed jar like I'm going to do and I'll store some small tubes of sunscreen in there and anything else that I can find handy. I'm really excited to know what you think about these mason jars. Is this something that you think you will take the time to make? Give us a gift, keep for yourself. I'm really curious to know. Let me know in the comments what you think about this Dollar Tree DIY spring decor. My friend, you have made it to the end of the video. Here is a look back on what we've created today. Thanks for staying until the end. And if you're in the mood for more, here is another video I think you might like.
I will see you next time. And don't forget to craft what you love.